I want to thank the organizer, Remy, Svetlana, and, and Justin for inviting me. I'm very happy to participate to this conference. And today I will talk about uh, recent results on global well poseness for derivative NLS and the long time behavior in the form of soliton resolution. So, uh, uh, oops, sorry. This work is done with uh, collaboration with Robert Jenkins from University of Arizona in Tucson, Jackie Liu and Peter Perry from University of Kentucky. Uh, and uh, here is the outline of the presentation. Uh, first, I would like to introduce, I mean, to present the basic properties, essentially global well poseness for small data. And uh, the big question is global well poseness for large data, which is essentially the uh, open problem. And uh, the, the goal of this work was to use the, the integrability of this, the NLS equation uh, to prove uh, global well poseness. And uh, to, uh, to put the problem in context, I will first uh, give some uh, general setting about uh, DNLS as an integrable system, which was discovered by Kaup and Newell in 78. And I will uh, do some introduction about important paper inverse scattering to put it in context and uh, how it works for DNA, derivative NLS. So the, the global well poseness will be a result of a, a careful analysis of the direct and inverse map we're going to show that these maps are Lipschitz continuous in appropriate space. And from there, at least for a large set of initial condition, including large, some large data, will prove global well poseness. And from uh, uh, the classical technique of inverse scattering, we will also get the large time behavior together with soliton resolution. All right, so this is a derivative NLS. It has a, the four usual, it's a one dimensional equation with the usual linear part for the Schrodinger, of Schrodinger. And the nonlinear part has a derivative, derivative NLS. Epsilon equals plus or minus one. Uh, the sign of epsilon is not important. If we change x to minus x, it's the same equation and changing. Uh, epsilon to minus epsilon x to minus x. And this equation is, has been obtained as uh, in a long wave, weakly nonlinear scaling regime from uh, the whole MHD, the magnitude hydrodynamic equation, hydrodynamic equations in the presence of all effect by Molius and the other papers too. Um, so I will uh, start with the uh, uh, basic properties. There are several ways to write the uh, derivative NLS and depending on the goal, uh, some transformations are more useful than others. So this one, uh, it's, uh, it's a, uh, well, this gauge transformation with this particular coefficient leads to a new equation, equivalent equation for the new function and uh, it has been useful in the study of well poseness. We see here that it, uh, uh, it has the nonlinearity of critical NLS. And indeed, it is uh, scaling, the, the scaling invariance uh, leads to, uh, uh, to the observation that this equation is L2 critical. And here are the essentially known results about global well poseness. Of course, uh, there is local well poseness in different uh, Sobolev spaces. And uh, what I am interested in, in generally, la, uh, smooth data, smooth initial condition. So the first uh, result about uh, global well poseness 
was obtained by Hayashi and Ozawa in 92, and they proved that if the initial condition is small enough in L2, and the, the threshold was square root 2 pi, they obtained global well posedness. And this number comes from uh, the, an optimal Gagliardo Nuremberg uh, uh, estimate in the same way as the work of uh, Michael Weinstein for NLS. And this, uh, this, bo this uh, upper bound was improved by Wu to square root of pi by uh, extending this analysis of improving, uh, I mean, getting the best constant in Sobolev inequality uh, by using uh, the momentum, this conserved quantity, instead of the uh, energy. And they, 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 he moved the, the threshold to square root of 4 pi and even proved the global well poseness in a, in a bigger space, bigger Sobolev space. Uh, so that's essentially the global well posedness for small data that is now understood at this. I would also like to say that uh, this equation has uh, uh, families of solitons, which is expressed here with uh, a profile that exp is explicit, explicit and uh, satisfy this equation unique solution of this, this uh, nonlinear elliptic equation and uh, traveling and the phase which is traveling also with velocity c. Now the relation between omega and c is that omega must be larger than square root, that's c square over 4 because we have the square root here. And uh, when the c and omega uh, uh, satisfy this relation that square root of omega e exactly equal to c over 2. Uh, this, this soliton, which is a very fast, uh, fast decaying soliton, uh, becomes algebraic and it has this form. Uh, so I, I wrote this formula, I think, for epsilon equals 1, or maybe 1 less 1, I'm not exactly sure. But it doesn't matter, this equation so I equivalent. It's, it's, it's a point of bifurcation of solitons, isn't it right? Yeah. Well, it's one, a, it, one square from one is equal to zero to right? Yes, it, it, because this, uh, this, this, algebra, this uh, bright soliton that becomes uh, algebraic. And it is interesting to, to notice that the, the, the best uh, constant that was obtained by, by Wu here, square root of two, square root of pi, is exactly the, the L2 norm of the, the soliton, the algebraic soliton. Now, the L2 norm of this, this family of soliton is between 0 and 4 pi. And in fact, it can be arbitrarily small in terms of size. We can have very small soliton, and, very, and the maximum value is that of the algebraic soliton. And there was a paper by Colin and Ota in, 16, in 2006 that showed that these bright solitons are orbitally stable. One more result about these basic properties is the work by Hayashi, Nomkin, and Uchida in 1999. And they proved that uh, they, they studied, uh, they take small initial condition in small, very regular initial condition in weighted spaces, weighted Sobolev spaces. And they took a large class of derivative NLS equations with all sort of containing very general first order derivatives. They proved uh, long time, they, they established the long time behavior of these solutions, of their solution. And they proved the existence of uh, asymptotic states. And uh, here is their, their result, well, they have several results, but I have uh, selected this point wise estimate as t goes to plus or minus infinity. Uh, so if I take g equals 0, it's just, uh, oops, it should be a comma. <laughs> if, uh, if, uh, so u, the solution, has a decay in 1 over square root of t, uh, an asymptotic state, uh, u plus minus, for x going to plus or minus infinity. And we see here uh, the, the logarithmic phase that is all, uh, logarithmic in the phase in log t, as it's always the case for 
in the nonlinear Schrodinger equation in 1D. Uh, of course, the, this, uh, this approach does not uh, give uh, explicit formula for these asymptotic uh, states. Uh, so the, the, the big question is global responsiveness for large data, and if uh, yes, uh, the large asymptotics. And uh, essentially, the PDE methods, uh, I, I, to my knowledge, there are no more of these uh, results in terms of for large data. And uh, we decided to use the, the special structure due to, inverse, to the, the integrability of this equation to uh, address this question and uh, establish global wealth poseness at least for a large uh, set of initial conditions. Uh, so here I would like to, to uh, recall a few things about inverse scattering. Uh, first of all, uh, it was discovered by Cowper Newell with a uh, well-known uh, paper in 78 that this uh, equation is integrable. Uh, they established uh, lax pairs and uh, the lax representation. And in this uh, short paper, they uh, show that they shown showed the the, lit, the established the linear spectral problem, uh, essentially the two operators, the, the operator L, where the solution of the NLS appears as a potential, and they de they determine the spectral data in the form of a reflection coefficient. This related to the continuous spectrum of the linear problem, uh, discrete eigenvalues and constant associated to this eigenvalue, like in the classical setting of inverse scattering. They showed that these spectral data evolve linearly in under the flow, and that the whole point of inverse scattering is to reconstruct the solution by inverting this direct map by an invert. Uh, in an inverse map, and in uh, this uh, setting, uh, the inverse map is described by uh, Gelfand, Levitt, and Marchenko uh, solution. Uh, Could you show please the yes? lax operator? Oh, oh, yes, I will show you. If you want to see it immediately, I have it there. Oops, it's a little bit. Uh, okay. It's this one. So this, uh, so this is a, the lax of the lax, the the, the 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 linear. It in fact it's written for an equivalent uh, DNLS for after a gauge transformation. So I return, I re return, and before going to the details for the inverse scattering for DNLS, I'd like to put uh, uh, the. Uh, some uh, discuss, I mean, there have been many, many papers on inverse scattering, but I will just, I chose a few uh, that were milestone paper, and I will concentrate on NLS, uh, of course, there is the, the, the KDV and KDV and many others equation. So I will just start with the sakharov Shabbat paper, 72, where it was established that indeed the defocusing and focusing NLS was integrable by inverse scattering with the, uh, the lax pair and all the uh, important uh, pieces of the inverse scattering for, for NLS. I would like also to mention Ablovitz Cap Newell Segur 74. Sometimes this paper is referred as AKNS, which deals with the Sakharov Shabbat system uh, for a large class of integrable system. And uh, now, the, 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 this other paper, these two papers, uh, or the, the next uh, big important contribution was sakharov manakov paper in 76, where the long time behavior of the solution was expressed uh, by, in a form where the formula were completely explicit, depending on the initial condition through the scattering data. So comparing, if I go for one minute back uh, to, oops, I'm not going to the right direction. 
Now I'm getting. Uh, I'm going back to <laughs> to oops to the, the result of uh, of uh, Hayashi Namkin. Uh, this. Manamki, uh, this manakov sakharov paper gives explicit formula for these asymptotic states. Oops, I'm getting... Uh, oh, I've lost something. Okay. Uh, so this is this is the the discussion about uh, the milestone the the basic uh, important paper on and on the inverse scattering. So the Sakharov Banakov paper gives precise formulas for the large time behavior with uh, dependency explicit on initial condition. And then I would like to mention the paper of Itz in eighty two, where he extends this uh, analysis uh, to derive the complete asymptotics of NLS from an associated Riemann-Hilbert problem. So this will be essentially the tools that we will be using. And a Riemann-Hilbert problem refers to a problem where one looks for a piecewise analytic function uh, along uh, in sectors of the complex plane. And the jumps along this contour are given, and the solution is, goes to one at infinity. So the key idea in these papers was to reduce the original riemann hilbert problem that appears in the inverse scattering transform to a universal one in terms of special function. These special functions are parabolic cylinder function, which satisfies uh, ODEs, simple ODEs. And in this, in this uh, perspective, the classical analysis of oscillatory integrals at a stationary phase point is replaced by the analysis of this uh, Riemann-Hilbert problem. And after reduction, these problems are essentially localized near a stationary phase point. So this uh, the techniques we will use uh, in a little uh, different form. Uh, I will also like to mention Bill Kaufman's work on the mathematical analysis of uh, the scattering uh, of the direct and inverse scattering for the sakharov shabat system. And uh, so here, uh, continuing of the, uh, among this important contribution, I would like to mention Dyfft and Zhu in these two, uh, and there are several papers, 93 concerned MKDV and 2003 concerned NLS. They introduced the, the method of non inner steepest descent for many equations, and they established uh, rigorous analysis and error estimates. So here I have stated uh, one of their theorem for defocusing NLS as the initial condition is in the Sobolev's place, 1, 1. So uh, Sobolev's uh, one derivative, one, one weight. And as t goes to infinity, the solution behaves like 1 over t, t square root of t, uh, coefficient r alpha uh, of the stationary point of the phase. Uh, so this is an exact formula where alpha and nu are explicitly given in terms of r, which is a reflection coefficient associated to the initial condition. And I will continue uh, the review of the important uh, result for NLS by uh, uh, work, uh, solid on resolution for focusing NLS and a full study of Borghese, Jenkins, McLaughlin for initial condition again in H11, somehow the, the optimal space for these techniques, where they showed that uh, as t goes to infinity, the solution sat, uh, behaves like a multi soluton solution plus a dispersive part that dis decay like 1 over t, has square root of t, and explicit. Uh, 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 Correction, 
and to to, to understand uh, what is this uh, what is this uh, principal part is multi soliton uh, I made uh, there is a little picture here. So if we want to express the, this uh, asymptotic behavior in this space cone, uh, in this for x t in this space cone here, uh, the, 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 the this principal part is a multi soliton associated to discrete spectral values, which are in this window. So for in this, uh, just to say it in a simple way, imagine that the initial condition corresponds to six discrete eigenvalues. If we want to estimate the solution in this space cone, in this window, only the visible solutions are those for which the real part is between these two, uh, in this velocity uh, bracket. So essentially, the, the only visible one, there are some that move too slowly, some these move too slowly, these move too fast. And there are explicit formulas, so the, the formulas here are completely explicit. I did not write them because it takes too long to write. Uh, okay, and the analysis of, uh, of uh, this paper is in fact a variant of dive zoo steepest descent. Uh, it was introduced earlier by Diang and McLaughlin, and they, this uh, approach combines the steepest descent of Dai Zhu by allowing a certain non-analyticity in this Riemann-Hilbert problem, and essentially uh, uh, there is two pieces in uh, some Riemann-Hilbert problem in sectors and in other sectors, a little bit of non-analyticity captured by this D-bar problem. All right. So I think I missed two pages, which was uh, <laughs> the summary of our results. So the, the summary of our results are here. We prove global well-posedness of the DNLS equation for initial condition in a dense and open subset of H22. So H22 is the Sobolev spaces with two derivative and weight x squared. And this open and dense subset uh, excludes spectral singularity. I will explain in a little moment. Uh, this, it contains small initial condition, and it also contains initial conditions of large L2 norm. We can, we can explicitly uh, find large L2 norm solution that enters into this uh, family for which we prove global wealth poseness. So we establish Lipschitz continuity of the direct and inverse scattering maps in these appropriate spaces. And we prove that this solution map that to the initial condition associate the solution of for long time is continuous for all time from mu uh, for all, uh, all interval of time to, uh, to H22. And then we establish the long time behavior in the spirit of the papers for NLS, uh, decomposing some of finite number of separated soliton and the radioactive part. We calculate explicitly those soliton parameters. They are slightly modulated due to interaction between soliton and interaction between dispersion and soliton. And we also calculate the dispersive part. All these have explicit formula, it's a bit long formula that I did not detail in this. Okay. And uh, I should also, I mentioned, I lost also this page, <laughs> which is a number of results that, there are many results, but I thought I would mention that. It is a work by Lee. He was a student of Bill's in 83. And he, he established uh, the study, he had the studies of direct and inverse map for generalized sakharov shabat system. I would like also to mention Kitai Vartanian, who developed the inverse scattering for modified NLS, and modified NLS contains uh, DNLS. Uh, they had the uh, Schwartz class potential. And in, in, independently of our work with uh, Jenkins, Liu, and Perry, uh, Perinovsky, and collaborators, 
What is GWP? Global well posedness. Global well posedness. Global well posedness. We, yeah. And so he, in, with a different method or... It's, it's for derivative Schrodinger. Derivative, an, derivative analysis, yes. So in parallel to the, this group of uh, collab people, we established also the group. All right, so now I would like to, uh, to continue uh, the basic uh, uh, setting for, so the inverse scattering setting for derivative NLS. So here is the derivative NLS equation. And uh, in fact, we are working on an equivalent form, which is obtained after this gauge transformation. And the advantage of this form is that when one expresses the Riemann-Hilbert problem that allows uh, to define the reconstruction of the potential through the inverse scattering map, uh, this Riemann-Hilbert problem has good normalized uh, appropriate not appropriately normalized solution, analytic solutions. So in, a, in our approach, this equation is a little bit more uh, appropriate to, to work on. And after finding the f long time behavior, the existence and long time behavior of this equation, we need to evaluate the gouge to come back to, to you. So both equations admit the lax pair and, and the PDE is, they are different lax pair, they, they have transformation that uh, also uh, between the two lax pair, the two, the, the two couple of lax pair, the couples of lax pair, and uh, the PDEs are the compatibility conditions uh, expressed in this form of the system. All right, so here is a direct problem for for the uh, DNL, for derivative NLS equation. So here it is written, psi is uh, the, it's written in the form of two by two matrix, function of x, sigma three is the third Pauli matrix, zeta is a spectral parameter, and QRP are constructed, are this matrix, this one is off diagonal, Q is the solution of DNLS, the potential, appears as a potential, and P makes, uh, uh, is, a, is defined here, like the uh, diagonal matrix, and compared to the Zakharov system, uh, Zakharov Shabbat, it is uh, quadratic in, in, the, in the, it is quadratic in the, uh, in the spectral parameter. Yes, and then, and if Q equals zero, so, of course, it becomes trivial. Uh, the solutions are multiple of uh, this exponential of matrix, and uh, they are bounded if zeta is... is real, right? Oh, no. Q, Q is a potential. Q is a solution of DNLS, mm -hmm. and, and P is real, and sigma is the... Sigma is a continuous spectrum. It's composed of the two uh, axes in the in the data in the data in the data plane. So imaginary, this is sigma. Mm -hmm. So later we will see there is a trans there, there are a lot of symmetries in this problem, and it's possible to to write uh, an equivalent problems for uh, where. Uh, that transform this, uh, the, this contour to the real axis. So it will be a little bit easier to, to manage the... Okay. And uh, as usual, we introduce... Uh, uh, we're going to introduce... This psi will be the just, just solution. And I obtain in the following uh, way. So if I define m in, the f in this way, so psi is m multiplied by this exponential, uh, classical uh, analysis using Volterra techniques or Volterra integrals is that if q is in L1 intersection L2, 
there exist unique solutions, M, there are matrix valued function that uh, such that M tends to the identity, uh, so M plus goes to identity if X goes to plus infinity, M minus goes to identity, so two, two solutions when X goes to plus minus infinity. And this, uh, this, uh, this is a classical uh, uh, setting, the Psi, the associated Psi are called just solutions, from the just solutions, uh, these solutions are not independent. There is this uh, transmission matrix, transition matrix, uh, T, so that relates C plus and C minus. And this uh, matrix T has the following form. Uh, B, uh, the breve, B breve and A breve are not independent of A. They are, they are formulas. And they can be, by solving again this equation backwards, there are formulas that give uh, A and A breve in terms of determinant. Uh, so this is a self adjoint problem, right? No, 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 it's not. It's not. And uh, so this, uh, this uh, by, ad by examining uh, these uh, formulas, uh, and coming back to the definition, uh, this function A and A breve anali uh, admit analytic, uh, analytic continuation. So, the an so if I called uh, omega, this is omega plus, this is omega minus uh, plus. Uh, so, this is where a breve has analytic continuation, and A has analytic continu a complex analytic, uh, analytic continuation uh, in the, this respective uh, domain. And uh, we will also uh, assume that it's possible that, uh, that A breve and A have uh, zeros, these zeros will correspond to soliton component in Q. So uh, these uh, zeros of a, a breve uh, corresponds to bright soliton. So the zeros correspond to bright solitons. And uh, when these zeros are on the real line, they are the algebraic soliton. And we're going to exclude in our analysis possibilities that, uh, uh, that this soliton, uh, that these zeros uh, touch the, the real axis, which is a restriction of our initial condition, excluding these spectral singularities. And because uh, of the symmetries, in fact, uh, these uh, zeros come in a quartet. So if there is a zero, he, uh, because there are relations between A and A breve, so they come in a quartet. And once we have one, we have the, all the others for, for, in, with relation. Now, associated, an important, uh, uh, so the zeros correspond to, uh, they, they will correspond to uh, uh, eigenvalues, discrete eigenvalues. And associated to this, so there will be part of the spectral data. And also another element in the spectral data are this norming constant. At a zero, we define C uh, zeta, which is, uh, uh, if the zero, the zero is simple, then uh, the derivative of A bar, A breve is non-zero, and we define this constant. All right. Uh, so uh, the, now we're going to to to, this, to uh, establish our set of function Q, for which we will uh, uh, prove this Lipschitz continuity of the spectral of the direct spectral map. So we're going to take set of Q that in H two H two comma two, we will allow a uh, breve to have at most finitely many zeros in um, in this part because we we need only to work on because they come in quartet. Let's assume that they, there is n zero 
there is capital N zero in uh, in omega plus plus. Omega plus plus is this one, this quad this uh, quadrant, and no zero. So A has a finite many zeros in A omega plus plus, no zero on sigma. And uh, we can see U as a set of disjoint unions of open set, UN, and UN refers to the number of zeros. So U1, 1, 0, U2, U3, etc. So this will be our set. And, uh, and to give a precise formulation of this inverse and direct map, there is these symmetries that, uh, that, that uh, is transform the contour sigma into the contour R by the transformation zeta So that will be uh, very useful. In particular, it, when we go to the long time behavior, we will see that the phase, the, there will be only one stationary phase point uh, instead of two. All right. So uh, here, so now I'm going to define uh, the direct scattering map in the following way to a, f to a potential Q in that space. Uh, I will associate the rho. Rho is the reflection coefficient defined in this way. So now it's a function of lambda because of all, all this symmetry we can reduce to this variable lambda. We, uh, and this is a scattering map. So Q, on, we associate the reflection coefficient, the, di the different discrete eigenvalues in uh, in the upper half plane, and this uh, constant that comes up with, uh, with this spectral, uh, with these discrete eigenvalues. And here is the th first theorem. The set U is open and dense in H22. It contains a neighborhood of zero. It contains Q with arbitrary L2 norm. And this direct map that maps bounded subset of Un into bounded subset of Vn, uh, well, uh, is uniformly Lipschitz continuous on this uh, set. So that's the first part, is that the Lipschitz continuity of the direct map in the appropriate co corresponding spaces. And I would like to show uh, also uh, as a uh, that uh, this set contains function with arbitrary large norm by constructing this function. So it will be a function that leads to no spectral singularity and no solitons. Uh, it is obtained by computing explicitly some special solution, essentially solving explicitly uh, this linear spectral problem. And here it is. So if I take Q initial initial condition in the form of uh, the, the uh, so Q0 is a constant, zec, uh, zec x, and then a phase. So the phase is, uh, has two parts. It has this, uh, this complicated part, and it has a phase. There is also a phase coming from exponential, um, yes, two, etc., of the zec. So if one computes, so if one chooses this coefficient nu, mu, and delta, real, such that uh, epsilon, if you remember, epsilon is the, we, we deal with the two equations at the same time. So epsilon is this coefficient here, plus or minus one. So if epsilon delta is smaller than this quantity, uh, this Q has an L2 norm as large as we want, and it is at the, it, and it and it is in the set U that for which we're going to prove global well -posedness. So this idea, this uh, construction, use idea of Tovbis Venakides for NLS. And also, Di Franco Miller, the same ideas 
for modified uh, NLS. Well, this set contains also elements with arbitrary small L2 norm. It, for example, it contains solitons, and it contains so, uh, so one soliton solution, the solution that I showed earlier, they correspond to one eigenvalue, and uh, the, the L2 norm that I calculated earlier is equal, once uh, trans one, one translate the formula into, into these parameters, uh, so the, the, the L2 norm of the one uh, soliton solution is exactly of this form, uh, square root of 4 pi minus the argument of lambda. So if I take a lambda uh, that has uh, an argument that is uh, very close to pi, that gives me a, an L2 norm very small. So this set contains... Uh, Okay. Now, of course, the heart of the inverse scattering is that the scattering data evolves in a, in a uh, trivial way. Uh, the, so the, the, uh, that's, uh, that was already in Carp Newell, uh, that uh, evolution of the scattering data are in the following way. Lambda, the, the discrete eigenvalues do not change in time. The, the reflection coefficient is just multiplied by this phase factor, and uh, also the, this uh, norming constant or connection coefficients are also multiplied by a, a phase factor. And uh, so that's a direct map, now the time evolution, and now we need to go back, that's the hardest part. Now the, the inverse scattering uh, map is in fact the, the task of recovering the potential, the solution of DNLS from the time evolved spectral data. And uh, there has been at least two ways to, uh, to, to recover this, uh, this uh, solution from the spectral data. The original way was uh, Gelfand, Levitt, and Marchenko formula. Uh, we're going to uh, use uh, the, the other approach related to a Riemann Hilbert problem. So the, from this spectral data, we defined a Riemann-Hilbert problem where the spectral data appear as you know, in the jump matrix. So, and from the solution of the Riemann problem, we recover the solution of DNLS uh, of, for a certain quantity for large spectral parameter. Now, one of the uh, very important tool in setting this Riemann-Hilbert problem that will produce the solution, uh, the, the, the potential, is the introduction of this Bills-Kaufmann solution. And uh, the, so that was due to Bills and Kaufmann. And essentially, they, cons they consist in constructing uh, a new function, M1, and N, uh, M from the function M related to the Jost solution uh, that I introduced earlier. So that's a, that's a uh, clever, comp not, not immediate way to construct this, uh, these new solutions, but they will uh, provide the Riemann-Hilbert problem to solve. So this uh, matrix valued function, uh, they, have, uh, they, have, they are meromorphic because they have a breve or a in the denominator. So if we have zeros, they will be meromorphic in, in the corresponding space. And uh, so meromorphic function from the complex plane minus the discrete, the, the, the continuous spectrum and the zeros uh, to the space of uh, matrices, complex matrices with determinant one. And they go to, uh, the way they are constructed are such that for, large, for the large spectral parameter, they tend to the identity. So that's the key, uh, uh, that's the important uh, result concerning this non intuitive construction. Okay, 
So, as function of x, this function m solves the spectral problem that has been constructed from the original solution. They tend to 1 as x goes to plus infinity. They are bounded on the other side. And the three properties that we just mentioned, they uniquely characterize this Bill's confined solution. And uh, now we're going to write the Riemann-Hilbert problem, uh, not in this variable, but in a simpler way, in, in those variables, because in, those, in this variable, the discontinuity will be along a, along a simpler uh, domain, uh, contour. So it's a little bit long, but I will try to, uh, here is the, the question. X and T are considered parameter and fixed. We, uh, we take, uh, rho is one of the spectral data, it's given. The zeros are of, the, the yen values are given, this constant Cj are given. And we want to find a matrix valued function N. So now I call it N because I'm looking in the variable lambda, which is a little bit simpler to express. So there are some symmetry uh, relations. Don't need to, to read it in details, but they, they come up as in, that, in the setting. They tend to, well, there is a little problem. It doesn't really tend to, to the identity, but it tends to this matrix as, Z, at the, as the spectral parameter goes to infinity. And then here are the two important conditions. One is the jump, expresses the jump as we, we, <coughs> we cross the, the contour of the real line. So this function n <coughs> are analytic except at the zeros. So they are meromorphic at the, near the zero. They are analytic anywhere else. And they have a jump. So the jump is given by a matrix, a little bit complicated matrix. What is important is to see uh, this phase uh, theta, this phase function, uh, that in, of course introduces the oscillations and integral, oscillating integrals and phase stationary methods. So we have on one, the, the problem is on one, we were given the jump and we are also given the residues in the upper half plane and in the lower half plane. Explicitly in terms of our data. And so now I have a little remark that this matrix was not exactly the identity, but in fact, because of these symmetries, one can work only with the, the first line in the matrix and have a well normalized uh, behavior. Anyway, the reconstruction formula, which, is, which means the solution, re recovering the solution of DNLS from the spectral data, is obtained in the following way. From this uh, entry, oops, from this entry, uh, so N, N, has, uh, N is a matrix, right? And N is a matrix. The solution of the Riemann-Hibbert is a matrix, and the, the solution of, of DNLS is obtained as a limit as the spectral parameter goes to infinity of this expression that involves Z multiplied by that, uh, that term is N. All right. And, oops. Should not have this here. Okay. Now I'm going to, to have the second theory, the second result. The inverse scattering from V to U takes bounded sets of V to bounded sets of U and is uniformly Lipschitz. So the, that's the uniform Lipschitz of the inverse map by the careful study of this uh, transformation, I, inverse map. And here is a the main theorem, the Cauchy problem for derivative NLS has a unique global solution for initial uh, data in this space U. So if you remember, U is a, 
open dense set of the Sobolev weighted Sobolev space, and it excludes singular, uh, spectral singularities. Uh, the solution map is a continuous map, and we have this, uh, if M is the solution map, we have this estimate of Lipschitz, uh, of, of continuity of this map. So this theorem established global well poseness in that, for this initial condition. And I will uh, continue with uh, the long-term asymptotics and soliton resolution, uh, essentially following the work done for NLS, but a little bit more complicated due to the complexity of the problem. I will first make a little remark about a Plancherel identity. So Plancherel, in general, is the, 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 the equality between the function, L2 function, the L2 norm of a function and the L2 norm of its Fourier transform. In the context of inverse scattering, we have also an equality, uh, but in a little weak between the L2 norm of the solution and the sp spectral data. It's a little bit less uh, precise. Uh, it is uh, of the form only on exponential. The exponential of the L2 norm is equal to the exponential of an expression that involves the spectral data. All these spectral data are, do not depend on time, so it's an equality. And uh, so I would maybe conclude with uh, the the long-term asymptotics. So again, we're going to look for uh, the behavior in space-time regions. Uh, it is the same picture as I had before. We look for the solution, the, the long-term behavior in this space-time cone for, uh, in the XT plane. And essentially, in these shaded regions, the behavior of, the, of Q for large time is, exp is obtained explicitly as the multi-soliton. Only the soliton in this window contribute and the dispersive part with explicit formula that are too complicated to write down. And as a special case of the long time, we can see also the asymptotic separation of the solution into a sum of one soliton solutions. So essentially, we, if one applies this theorem by taking a space cone that contains only one soliton, if we take a, a space cone that contains only one soliton, then we have uh, that the solution in, that, in this special set uh, <coughs> behaves like a multi soliton, a sum, a sum of individual soliton, of one soliton. So, so this is a one soliton that we have seen before. Uh, and all these parameters can be ex computed explicitly. They, they are some phase shift and take into, co uh, into uh, consideration the interaction. And I will finish with a list. Uh, yes, so this is the, the final result. And this is a list of papers that we have been using quite a lot, Borghese and Art for the long-term asymptotics of NLS, Daft and Ju, uh, uh, Kitai Varnat Tanyan, and Lisa Lin Thesis. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you to Catherine. And uh, so if there's any questions, you'll need to speak the question into the uh, microphone. Hi. I guess that I missed the, what's the space in which you do the, is the same space as Pelinovsky? It's like a weighted space. Well, it's one. a little bit dif different, but it's not very different. Okay. Uh, uh, and then for the original equation, when you go back, you get continuous well, dependence, well, but not uniform. Uh, well, for, for going back requires, uh, in fact, a non, non so trivial step, but I did not give a detail. It, it, it requires, to find the long time behavior of this, uh, this exponential term, this gouge transformation. So if x is infinity, I, sh I show this weak Plancherel, 
And if x is not infinity, it requires a little bit more work. And at the end, you get like existing uniqueness and continuous dependence for the original. Yes, okay. existent uniqueness and uh, smoothness of the map from Q0 to Q, continuous. Con continuous, but non, continuous. Non, not uniform continuous. No, continuous. Continuous, continuous. because for of the gauge. For yeah. all time. Yeah, yeah, because of the gauge. Yes, not uniform because of the gauge, exactly. Thank you. But I did not state exactly the theorem for you. Thank you. So, uh, one technical question. Uh, when you consider a uh, luxury representation, uh, and, uh, and in such a case, no, no, no I, I can uh, speak louder. Uh, <laughs> you, you make a, a transformation from uh, zeta to uh, lambda is zeta, zeta square. Maybe it's, it's nice to start from, from uh, lambda, or I mean, introducing luck representation. Yes, well, it, 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 it is true. When, when I, I stated. So, there are. Uh, for the direct map, exactly, we in fact study the, the map in the, in the lambda variable. But for the inverse map, uh, the, there was a difficulty in proving existence of solution to the Riemann-Hilbert problem. And essentially, the, uh, the setting in the zeta variable uh, was easier to handle. So we do the existence of, of, of solution of Riemann-Hilbert problem here, in uh, uh, existence of solution to Riemann-Hilbert problem in the zeta variable. But we do all the rest in the lambda variable. Especially the long time behavior, uh, we have only one uh, stationary phase point, which makes it much easier. Anything else? Uh, okay, all right, thank you again. Okay. Thank you.